Let's do the breakfast. On Plus TV Africa, we have uh, Thomas Monday who joins the conversation this morning to bring us update in the world of sport. Monday, it's good to have you join us. Thank you so much. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. All right. So um, let's start off with the Golden Eaglet reaching the um, finals of the 2023 African Under-17 Cup of Nations. Should this be uh, something very cherry news for us as Nigerians, despite all of the concerns that we're faced with at the time? It should be something the whole country should be jubilating about because when the foundation is right, when the foundation is right, then the rest becomes history and great stories. And of course, Andrew Carlton Bonnie, the head coach of the Golden Eaglet, has been doing a great job. He didn't, he didn't just start this year. He's been the reason Nigeria are one of the best uh, countries when it comes to under-17 football. In case you don't know, Nigeria is the best nation. that We've won five under-17 championship, world championship. And yet again, the under-17, the Golden Eaglets are in the finals of the Wapu Zombie competition uh, later on this evening against Burkina Faso. It is something we should be happy about because we have something ongoing in our grassroots football. You come by the whole coach of the Golden Eaglets, the same man that discovered the likes of uh, Kelechi Yanacho, Victor Simen, and he was one of the coaches that won us the five world championship that we have. So it's something great. It's something to be happy about. I'm really, really excited about the new boys. We've got free kick takers. And in our previous game, we were able to beat, uh, we were able to beat Ivory Coast three goals to one after losing in the first few minutes. The boys were able to run it back. And this is the character of great champions. And tonight, I, I think it's going to be an easy peasy for the uh, Golden Eaglet. Although they are playing against the Burkina Faso side, who are unbeaten in this tournament so far. But I listened to Nduka about it some uh, hours ago, and he, he's speaking, he's talking tough, and he's, he's getting ready for the big one later on this evening. I want to urge Nigerians that the boys can bring it back home. Uh, um, Abandi Thomas, uh, what's your analysis of the entire tournament? Um, of course, the uh, Golden Eagle is doing very well. Um, uh, you know, beating the likes of Ghana and other teams. Um, do you think uh, African football, West African football, is finally getting it as far as the age, uh, you know, the whole football age versus real age thing is concerned? I think the MRI test is uh, making things better. Personally, I'm really sure about the Nigerian side. But also, if you take a look at their faces, you can tell that these are real youngsters. I know we've been in the same situation where we used to get over eight players. I mean, the fact some, 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 some of our workers that we won, funny enough, is from the over eight players. But for these boys, with the MRI test, they're always on the going before every competition. I think they're one for the future. They are young lads and they can stand a very long period. They are young stars, battles. You've got to believe me, there's nothing wrong with this set of players. I've seen their faces. I know sometimes the faces doesn't get to depict how old the person is. But these guys, they are playing beautiful football. And for the MRI test that, that they honor went before this tournament, I think we don't have any issue about overage players or players who are, are, are grown the under 17. Hmm. All right, let, let's get to, you know, the transfer news on the window right now. Uh, for Manchester United, uh, fans seem to be very disappointed with the fact that there might not just be any business of signing, I mean, you know, signing any player. But there are also reports saying that, uh, you know, players are also departing. For instance, the likes of uh, Paul Pogba, you also have Lingard and uh, Mata, as well as uh, rumours saying that, Ronaldo might just also have plans to leave, but what do you really make of Manchester United and the fact that they're not even uh, making plans to sign new players, looking at how far the team has actually fared? I don't mean to ruffle any shoulder this morning, but I've got <laughs> to be brutally honest. Manchester United is not a big club anymore. Manchester United is not a big club. They've got rich history. They've got trophies in their cabinet, but in the past, three, four years, they're not a big side anymore. And when you take a look at the transfer market, it's the pedigree of a side, the per pedigree of a club side in the past four years, what have you been able to win? Because we are now playing in the generation of football where they're just concerned about a big team. 
Yeah, they're just concerned about a big team because big team wins the trophies. Individual, uh, in, in, individual players don't get to win trophies anymore. You've got to be, you've got to be playing collective football. You've got to play alongside big names so that you can win trophies. For Manchester United, which big name do they have? Probably Cristiano Ronaldo. Just as he rightly stated, he's about to be on his way out because he has seen that with this crop of players at United, he can't win trophies. So right now, the transfer market, Manchester United have one problem, reputation problem. They cannot attract good players. That's the same problem Arsenal are, are having. But for somehow Arsenal, they have this nick. Uh, they have this uh, quality of signing great players. Well, we don't, I don't need to say he's a great player. I'm talking about Fabio uh, Vieira, who Arsenal signed. Well, from his YouTube videos, <laughs> he's a fantastic player. But I'm not sure what he can do in the English Premier League. So Arsenal and Manchester United have the same problem. You can't attract a big name. Goodness, Erling Haaland can't come to Manchester United. Manchester, they've got the purchasing power, they've got billions, but he won't go because he wants to win the Champions League. He's yeah. Erling, like Erling Haaland, young star, he knows that he's got great potential and he just to play alongside all the staff so that he can win the uh, championship. Manchester United, since the transfer window started, they, 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 they tried getting uh, Frankie de Jong, they've got purchasing power. Every morning, they keep increasing the beat. From Frankie de Jong saying, I'm skeptical about this club. Uh, with a uh, little persuasion from uh, Barcelona, and now that deal, uh, I'm not really sure it's going to go through. Paul Popper moved yesterday, and they, uh, they can't attract good players. So the reason why Manchester United are struggling in the transfer market right now is that they are going for players who are above them, with all due respect. All right. Uh, um, we've, we've heard talk about, you know, uh, 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 Ericsson uh, having to choose between between Brentford and Manchester United, I'm sure that may give you uh, you know fuel to support your suggestion that Manchester United is a small club. But please do not get close to any Man U fan who is watching this morning. They just might uh, might hit you <laughs> for saying their club is a, is a is a small club. Um, I mean I mean all clubs go through their, their time or period of dryness. Liverpool, uh, for instance, um, you know, isn't it too early in the day? Uh, we could yet yet see uh, Sven Goran Eriksson uh, um, uh, joining joining um, uh, what do you call it again joining Manchester United. Uh, isn't it too early in the window to be uh, uh, calling this transfer uh, you know window or period a failure for Man U? You know we still have some some days to go, uh, if not weeks. And also, secondly. What do you think the problem is with Manchester United? I mean, if you look at the figures they've spent on transfer activity in the past few years or past few seasons, it's a lot. You know, we can look at Jadon Sancho who came in, uh, Edison of Cavani who came in, uh, the young man or the old man who came in from Real Madrid for their defense and all that. They've been buying players, Tellers and Co. So what is the problem? What is the problem? Is it from the board? Is it from the CEO who's leaving? Is it from the, the coaches they've been in? What is the problem with Man U? So I've asked two questions. Can you start from the first? All right. The, the, the root problem is that Manchester United have lost their reputation. And the, uh, the branches is that uh, they are signing coaches that they can control. They couldn't control Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho said, I can't continue. Yes, they're signing coaches that they can uh, take decision over. They are not empowering their coaches enough. They are not giving them the power to make decisions. The board signed players from Manchester United. Of course, it's the board, they own the club. So this is what happens. It's the board that are signing players, and I also think the coaches they are signing also have a part to play. Now, football is all about money. Now, if you sign me right now, and you tell me I can't make signing, and then you're paying me 250000 weekly, all right, keep on making your signing. I'm here to cash out. That's what happens right now. Everyone is using Manchester United to cash out. No one is really concerned because Jose Mourinho his past records quality, but in Manchester United, he was having issues with the board. He had issues with Paul Pogba because the board were defending Paul Pogba because probably Paul Pogba was the most popular player at that time. His jersey was selling. So he can't trust Paul Pogba. So Manchester United have a board issue, and if Eric Ten Hag can tell them, hey, can I be in control for at least three seasons, and let's see how we can move this club forward. But no, they want to sign players for the coaches. Mm. So what, this is the problem. Well, what about what, what about yeah? What about uh, you know David when David Gill was there, 
uh, you know, everyone was saying David Gill has failed. He spent a ton of cash, and he is he has not been able to bring the club back to where it belongs. Uh, mm -hmm. David Gill out, and he left. And uh, uh, you have Richard Arnold coming in, and he's also having issues. Is 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 it, is it from the appointment of who leads the ship to be able to you know make the final decisions and coordinate everybody? Well, first off, I would like to uh, just uh, reaffirm my point. The few few weeks that Eric Ten Hag was announced, he came out to say that he doesn't have Cristiano Ronaldo in his plans, but he was pressured by the board. Why would you say that? Why would you say you don't have Cristiano Ronaldo in your plans? He had to, he had to uh, refute that particular one still on the media. He, he didn't say something like that. Like Cristiano Ronaldo is a very good player that he will see how we, he can work with them in the future. So it also a uh, coach. It can't be coach all the time. Because people also get to see the coach on the pitch of play. He's the main actor, but there are some people at the background who control virtually everything at the club. So Manchester United signing a new manager, Eric Ten Hag, and we, with his football in Ajax, is playing the best football. But that beautiful football, we may not get to see it at the theater of dreams if Manchester United's board do not give him the complete authority the complete powers to make decision the way he wants it, to sign the players he wants to work with hmm. because a coach no matter how good you are you need to know how to control your players and if you can't control your players you don't have powers over them they'll certainly do what they want to do and then you'll be in a bond to be blamed later on all right all right i, I was actually talking about ed, Wood, ed woodward not david gill uh, but we, we have to call it a day at this point uh, monday uh, thomas um it uh, it's remains to be seen if uh, Eric Ten Hag can turn around the situation at the 14s of this club. I mean, we can look at Liverpool and the struggles they had in the Premier League uh, until um, uh, the current coach, Jurgen Klopp, came. Maybe Ten Hag can be the club that will turn around the 14s of a sleeping giant in Manchester United. Thank you for your time, Monday, and hope to have you soon. It was great talking to you once again, Bartle. Say hi to your co-presenter. And it's, it's good to also know is that basketball is back in the nation because of time and the lack of it. Maybe we'll get to talk some other time. All right. Many thanks for being part of the show. We appreciate your time. And that's the uh, much we can take on The Breakfast. Uh, if you missed that on any part of it, it will be all right. To follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Bobo. And I'm Kofi Bertels. So we can't wait to have you back with us next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Good morning.